90 minutes of NFL conversation still ahead on SportsCenter, including one-on-one -on -one with Dak Prescott. The Cowboys quarterback has looked pretty good in his first two games this season. And in moments, you'll hear what play Dak says made him feel like he was really back from his devastating injury. And NFL Live's Mina Kimes is back with us now. And Mina, what's going on in Chicago right now? Oh, God, what isn't happening? <laughs> um, God, I don't want to join the pile on today, but I got to tell the truth and say how what I see how this plays out going forward. The Bears host the 0-3 Lions in week four. But tonight's Monday night football matchup between the Eagles and the Cowboys, NFC East rivals. What's the deciding factor going to be in this game? To me, Philadelphia. Dak back at home there. What's your prediction for what we see tonight? I got the Cowboys. Okay. But I think it'll be close. We will see. We'll find out in just a little while. Mina Kimes been in studio with us. Thanks, Mina. That is going to be a great game this week, and we've got a good one for you tonight, Monday Night Football. Cowboys getting ready to go head-to-head -head against the Eagles, and Dak Prescott going to be back home at AT&T Stadium for the first time since he suffered a devastating ankle injury last season. Michelle Beisner buck sat down with Dak to preview the matchup, discuss the importance of mental health and helping him overcome his injury, and why he could barely watch his team's game-winning kick in Week 2. Well, it's Jeff Saturday, and Jeff, he was so accurate. He completed over 80% of his passes for the second straight game. They are in the top six in the NFL in offense. So what is the formula for the Cowboys that you think can sustain them back into playoff contention? Yeah, offensive balance, Hannah. Have that balance in week one, but you're right. They almost pulled it out, if not for uh, Tom Brady's signature special uh, in the final moments there. So when you look at this Dallas team and you consider the best in the NFC and some really good teams, Rams and Bucks and Cardinals and Packers, et cetera, yeah. where do you put the Cowboys? I'm putting them fourth, Hannah. When I, when I look at this football team, I think he's due and he's putting his players in the best position to succeed That's according right. to their abilities, head coaching experience from Quinn. And we appreciate your experience and insight. Next up for the Cowboys, the 3 0 Panthers. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Hannah. So, Jay, we're in the final week of baseball's regular season, and the American League wildcard standings have no less than five teams sitting at the top, separated by just a few games which brings us to the real life possibility of a baseball unicorn, the three way tie. And no matter how many cups of coffee that you have already had this morning, it would be nearly impossible to actually digest what happens should that be the case. So we brought in our expert Buster Olney to help us sort through this rare possibility. Here we go. Take it away, Buster. And Jay with you and LeBron James joined the brothers Manning on their Monday night football telecast last night. He famously played football in high school, of course, and I can see you laughing because it was so good. They're so funny and he even talked about Jerry Jones and Pete Carroll trying to recruit him during the lockout yeah. in 2011 and he even predicted a play last night as well. Yes, uh, yes. Eli said he's better at predicting plays than you are Peyton. I mean, they like to dig each other. Here's the best of Peyton and Eli from week three on Monday night. Jay, Tom Brady's dad made headlines last week saying that Bill Belichick wanted Tom out the door and that his son felt vindicated by winning a Super Bowl without Belichick. So the quarterback himself joked about it on his Let's Go podcast last night saying, quote, Comments made by Thomas Edward Brady, a 77-year-old insurance company CEO who should know better at this point in his life, don't necessarily reflect the views of his son. And he went on before later saying that he was just having fun and he has the greatest dad in the world. Brady, of course, also talked about the return to Foxborough on Sirius XM. Big facts, we are three sleeps until the homecoming of the century. That's yeah. not hyperbole, I think. What are Brady and Belichick focused on as they prepare for the game? Plus, Kevin, we've got the latest on the severity of Lamar Jackson's latest injury. And Brian Windhorst will join us with much more about Kyrie's future in Brooklyn. Wendy also has more on the Sixers, as mm. Joel Embiid has some strong words about Ben Simmons today. The All right, joining us now, our senior NFL insider, Adam Schefter, is going to take us through some updates with the Buccaneers' significant injuries. And I want you to start there with Tom Brady's favorite target, Gronk, and <laughs> those ribs. Well, ill for a second straight day, Rob Gronkowski. So glad you brought that up. It was one game. It's not as much as the 326 <laughs> that Tom had there, but nonetheless significant as he'll be back in New England. Adam Schefter with the latest here. Thanks, Shefty.
Thank you. Bring us now, Jeremy Fowler, who is live ahead of Thursday Night Football. A lot has been made and will be made of this chemistry between Jamar and Joe Burrow. This is really, despite it being Jamar Chase's rookie season, their third year together. How has that helped their chemistry early on? Well, hell, this duo is so hot right now that Blosky that really illustrates the chemistry between those two coming up. Let's talk about the other side of this, that being Trevor Lawrence. I highlighted some of the foibles, right? Those interceptions, the turnovers. What does he need to do better and how is he sort of viewing this game tonight? Well, I just spoke with teammate Josh Allen. He said five speed, right? As you learn along the way, you're going to ruin the transmission a little bit, but you're also <laughs> going to get moving at some point, right? And that's exactly right, because there has de definitely been some highlights among these three games for Trevor Lawrence as well. Jeremy Fowler, a highlight of the show. Thanks for joining us here on SportsCenter. <laughs> also balled on that national championship. 221 yards, couple of touchdowns. Dan Orlovsky joining us now. A lot's being made of the chemistry between Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow because of their history together from college. Can you sh sort of show the people at home what that looks like? Yeah, first of all, beat man coverage. And second of all, trust when I give you a chance to go make a play, you do. That wasn't a go win. Check Jamar Chase. And then when big explosive plays are needed, and maybe it's not, hey, my guy just quarterback and receiver. Which is why they have four touchdowns in the last three games. And honestly, they haven't even opened up this thing. We're yeah, going to see. It's We're going to see. It, it's certainly coming. Maybe tonight against the Jaguars, the team you're going to talk about, and specifically Trevor Lawrence coming up. Monica McNutt, rather, join us here in studio, if I could say her actual name. I'm here. Um, <laughs> the Sun obviously need a win tonight. But you somehow think that the reigning WNBA MVP and John Quill Jones is not going to be a part of how they're going to get it? So she is a part, okay. but I think back po their post players, excuse me, played well. And hopefully John Quill can get it going in the fourth. That's the yeah, one the thing, fourth. right? She got a little bit quiet in that final frame. In that second game, the Aces trying to take a 2-0 series lead, as I said. Why is Las Vegas so challenging to deal with? Because they have so many weapons. They have seven. That they're going to get, we expect, a high-scoring affair. Yes. It was a shootout in game one. Both of these teams can put up buckets. We'll see that. The doubleheader tips off at the top of the hour right here on ESPN2. Make sure to join us. Made it. It's Friday. Welcome into Sports Center. We go back to PTI for much more on, of course, Brady versus Belichick. Nope. Which one is dealing with the pressure to win on Sunday? And they say no news is good news, but is that the case with naming a starting quarterback? We're going to dig into the Bears' somewhat odd strategy, but first we're going to start with the headline. Speaking of... Okay. Jeremy Fowler is joining. I mean, just like... <laughs> Exasperated. But, but, uh, yeah, I just don't understand why all of the, the intrigue and the mystique and the mystery. Why are they dragging this decision out? Well, for one, it's gamesmanship, classic gamesmanship. There it is. But right. they want to extend... 15. All right, so there's that on that injury and that intrigue. I want to go around and look at some other injuries. I want you to start there with Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson. He missed two practices. He was back today. Yep. What's his availability look like against the Broncos? Well, he's questionable, but this is trending upward. There's Different defenses. The one with him on the field and the one when he is not playing. No doubt, uh, no doubt the Steelers want to see the one with him on the field. Jeremy Fowler joining us to break down some injuries around the league. Coming back, you. Now, we've seen homecomings and reunions sure. in sports before. Uh -huh. It happens all the time. But you and I talked about this off air yesterday. We can't recall something this big in our lifetime no. when it comes to sports, right? No. A Hall of Fame player yeah. coming back a year after winning the Super Bowl to exactly. face a Hall of Fame coach. It's a movie script. It's insane. Because Jordan wasn't winning rings, right, with the Wizards mm -hmm. when he faced the Bulls. And frankly, we didn't spend as much time dissecting was it more Phil or Jordan that impacted the dynasty. I'm just saying. This November, ESPN has an unparalleled access to Tom's journey. So here's a little sneak peek of the man in the arena. One of the big games today, obviously, is Arkansas, Alabama. Uh, sorry, Ole Miss and Alabama. And the Heisman favorite is Matt Corral. Uh, presents a very tough test for Saban's squad, who has shown some holes in the defense. So how does Corral beat Bama? Well, Nicole, when I went back and watched the nation either, Ole Miss is 0-13 in program history against the number one team in the country. You've got the notes. Got the I'm going to pretend it's the book. It's the manual, which is we're going to open the book yes. on a quarterback. And I want to head up since he's Desmond Ritter because he's not been shy this week about quieting the noise in South Bend. He's like, yeah, it might be noisy to start, but I'm going to quiet them down. So how can he silence the Irish? I think, <laughs> what is that? We'll work on it. We'll work on that later. Yeah. Ritter has a QBR <laughs> of 94.7 in the fourth quarter this season. That is not bad. You can catch more of I think over here. 10 a.m. <laughs> Eastern on the huddle. It is on the ACC network. Tim Tebow from Tuscaloosa. Look, Matt Corral has had arguably the best month, the best first month of this season. How can that Bama defense slow him down? Well, I don't think they really will. I think this is going to be 
seven touchdowns in his last game, or at least he counted That's for all. seven. That's it's not that That's big of a deal, all. only no. seven. Mm -mm. It is the second straight week that K.J. Jefferson and the Hogs are facing the top-scoring defense in FBS. And we sat here a week ago and said what he did last week against a and was going to help build his confidence for this tough stretch. So how confident are you in him this week? Well, I think it would have built confidence, and I think it probably... ...time to be injured when you face the schedule that Arkansas is facing right now. Next week, they have to host Corral and the Rebels. More of Tim, SEC Nation, coming up 10 a.m. Eastern on the SEC Network. Bye. Bye. And to hug it out. It's been a week. Let's review it. The U.S. Ryder Cup team did a very American thing, <laughs> letting the rest of the country focus on football on the final day of competition. The American League, chaos rains and there is a scenario in which the season could end with a four-way tie between the Yankees, the Mariners, the Blue Jays, and the Red Sox. Now some people like to watch the world burn. It was Michael Caine, Dark Knight. Yes. Great movie. It's Michael. If thank you. If the Yankees lose their final two games, if the Mariners and the Blue Jays win their final two, and if the Red Sox split their final two, all four teams would finish with a regular season record of 91 and 71. That would set up a two play-in game scenario. Split them up. Winners of those would then be the wild cards, and then those two would play each other, and I am all for it. Again, October is wild and not at all weak, unlike a few things, W-E-A-K, that we saw or heard this week, E-E-K. All right, picture this, an innocent man sitting on his couch watching the Manning cast on Monday Night yep. Football. His old high school football teammate comes on, and that old teammate just buries the innocent man. That is the way, we've got to find a better way. We are smarter than this. I, I would hope we are. I want to go back to LeBron real quick. Please, you think, please. You, do you think it was his high school quarterback that kept him from pursuing football? Or was it the fact that he's 6'8 and doesn't like contact in the NBA and so probably wouldn't like it on a football field? And probably chose, like, what he was God-given gifts Randolph to Randolph Scott at ESPN.com. I'm just curious, like, what you think it was. That because is probably your Chris weekend Bullock. review. Definitely that. Definitely that. Randolph, it's time for the bandwagon to bring a little a little joy into the world. Yeah, this is a sports show. It's also right? a competition show. So follow me here. There's a competition. It caught my national park in Alaska. It's a competition of fat bears. Just the Steelers tomorrow. Yeah, it's a rather large matchup yes. between two rather large fan bases. And speaking of loud and proud fan bases, oh. I hear game day. You can hear Athens somewhere. already. Well, where that box gets checked a couple yes. of times. And you are, you know, the Southern Cuisine restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I he That's what it's all about. He always makes me laugh. I've seen that a million times already. So fun. Welcome into Sports Center, Linda Cohn, Ashley Brewer. Hey, the MLB wildcard race is crazier than a Vegas pool party. I've never been, so I actually wouldn't know, but I've heard. Uh, college football, also wild. Yeah, we like to call it Statement Saturday, which was exactly the plan for Stanford at home against third-ranked Oregon. Yeah, It's going to be one of those Sundays where you need multiple screens. You got baseball, football, MLS, a little bit of everything. All right, I'll be watching with yeah. Babs. You with Hank. Yep, see ya. <laughs> They're going to try to take advantage and exploit those O-line issues for the Eagles. Listen, this Chiefs defense was unable to withstand those four turnovers in week three. What do they need to do today? Well, listen, there's a couple e issues that are plaguing the Kansas City. You're not going to stop anyone on offense. That's the key on yes. defense, right, is communication. The, the Seattle Seahawks are having the same yes. issues. Only four sacks for them. Only four sacks, by the way, for the Cowboys, and the Bucks only have three. Kind of surprising. It is. All right, Damian, we'll talk to you about Foxborough coming oh, yeah. up. Okay. Rob, and in case anybody was wondering what sort of reception Tom Brady would get tonight at Foxborough, the answer perhaps came in his arrival in New England last night as the Buccaneers flew into Providence, landing just before 8 p.m. and went to their hotel. Brady stepped off the bus and was greeted by a large crowd hearing the familiar chants of Brady, Brady, Brady. He smiled and he waved, and tonight he will exit the visitor's tunnel at the stadium that he called home for two decades. They're in Foxborough to get us set for the biggest game of the year, Sam Ponder and the Countdown Crew. Patriot in-house, Damian Woody is here. So you know this team so well. Bill Belichick obviously knows Tom Brady better than anybody. I saw you nodding your head mm -hmm. when you talked about the rope-a-dope game plan. So take us through what you think we should see defensively. So Hannah, during my Patriot day, you know, early, used to scoring at a record pace, mm -hmm. sometimes they get impatient. And I think that's what Sal Powell's alluding to. Flood the defensive coverage, make, make Tom decipher it, 
Make them run the ball. See if they have enough patience to be methodical on drives. That's what Coach Bill is averaging 56 yards a game, second worst uh, rushing in the NFL to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But do they have a chance tonight, you think, the Pats? Listen, in Foxborough, anything, anybody, you, definitely. I mean, you're talking about the greatest head coach of all time. So it's going to be, I can't wait to watch this one. I cannot <laughs> is wait. Is it the coach? Is it the player? Oh, the referendum continues. <laughs> we won't know till all is said and done with both. It'll match up in the NFC West. The Seahawks travel to meet the Niners. The Hawks defense is shockingly one of the worst in the NFL this season, giving up more yards per game than any other team. They sit at one and two and with a big game Thursday on the horizon against the Rams. So it's a make or break time already for Seattle and they're hoping that their star Jamal Adams can be a difference maker and impact a game for the first time this season. Here's Brady Henderson with more. Schefter reported at the top of our show the Ravens Lamar Jackson is expected to play in Denver today despite that sore back. After missing two practices this week, he was a full participant yesterday. And he faces a Bronco team, allowing a league low 8.7 points per game, led by AFC Defensive Player of the Month, Von Miller. But as Dan Graciano reports, Denver has feasted on some poor competition. All eyes on Foxborough tonight. Do they hug it out at the end, Brady and Belichick? Briefly. Okay, good. <laughs> Maybe. Well, <laughs> Countdown is next live from Foxborough. Enjoy week four. Let's go. Let's go. Dan Orlovsky, Ryan Let's go. Fix your face. How are we going to deal with this question? Fix your face. Can we be 21 about it? Can we cover the NFL and cheer for a team? Absolutely. Yeah, man. If it's against the rules, I'm out of here. All right. We got a lot coming your way. We're going to tell you a little bit later what we thought it would be three weeks through. Yeah, first of all, the jacket is mint chocolate chip ice cream. Um, They are. Two things. Yes, it is. Two things. I think the Cowboys offense, the defense is going to do. Then devise a plan and then put it in place to attack. Kellen Moore is doing that. They're play, he's always putting these guys in position to play well to their strengths. Now, I expect things about Kellen Moore, but you need talent to execute these things. And right now, it's getting to be like pick your poison when you're playing the Dallas Cowboys. I spend a lot of time in Arizona. <laughs> I live in Louisiana, and I don't like snakes. Right? If I'm, either. If, I'm, if I'm out watching the Arizona Sun Devils play, Arizona, and I'm out in the swamp fishing, which I will never be, that's going to be yeah, Swagoo. Yeah. If he get bit by a water moccasin, I'm going to be ticked off for of Swagoo. No doubt. And that, <laughs> man, go you know, I'm, I'm going to say nice things about your Cowboys too right now because uh, they might be my favorite offense in the NFL mm -hmm. right wow. now. And for me, it all comes back to four. I, Dan, I, I text you, I feel like, after every touchdown pretty much saying, did you see that play design? Yeah, because yeah. It, it, sure. there's so many cool plays, and Kellen Moore's doing such a fabulous job, as you said, recognizing, okay, this is what we're going to get on defense. Yep. Here's the great things they're doing with the tight ends and the run game. You watch that touchdown to Cedric Wilson, yeah. number one. And, cool. yeah, right, they, they got the skill players, I think three of them bunched left. Um, Dak looks left. He's got Zeke in the flat covered. Uh, Blake Jarwin, yep. quick hitch, covered. So he rolls right, and honestly, I think he might be better at throwing on the move than any quarterback in the NFL right now, just how smooth it looks. Looks, 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 finds Wilson, credit to him, you know, gets open for his quarterback. That's playmaking. Yeah. That's yeah. not a – sure. there's nothing scheme about that. That is just a playmaker. But, but isn't that a different version of him then, Dak? Like well, I would say it, it, what's what's perfect about it and what is different, it, it's the combination of, about this Cowboys offense. As you've just he's, marinated. He's, he's been swinging in his doing chair doing like this, y'all. No, uh, listen, it, it, was, that face, that face it, was, it was beautiful. Lean on that at some point during the season. And for the defense, yeah. way exceeding expectations so far. How have they done that? Freedom of knowledge. You can play free when you need. And this and that. They're playing man 62%, 62% of the time, third most in the NFL, and they're doing it well. All right, guys, the Cowboys actually finished the regular season with the Eagles. In, in fact, they actually finished with the Eagles and the Cardinals. So uh, that's the last two weeks. I don't know if we want to call that the double bird I or my, bird I games. Love, I love my Cowboys. Oh, got it <laughs> in there. Tougher. Eli would be a fan of that one. All right. Eli. Let's get ESPN. Right. Right. I know. This show is supposed to be a PG rated show. <laughs> <laughs> she knocked my mic off. She does about she the, because it's about Look the torque. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the torque. <laughs> all right. We're all going to learn how to do that and we'll show it to you as a group later. How about need, the Cowboys defense? Cowboys debut this season on Sunday. Odell Beckham was allowed to eat, but he wasn't force fed. 
And for so many times until this point in the season. Well, the offensive line is just not playing well enough, first of all. Those incompletions from last week, I think a little bit more tied to the reality of the game. They got down so big so quickly. They had to, There's plays in those three or four plays a game. you got to believe that your eyes start deep and then bring them to short. And when you see it, trust it and let it go. Is it more on Mac at this point or the scheme? I think it's a little bit more on the scheme because they're seeing so much man coverage and they don't got the guys to just go whoop people in man coverage. That being said, Mac, there's misses there. The big play misses are there. And again, he needs to start thinking, I'm going to look deep and then bring my eyes short. All right, Dan, I'm leaving you. We're going to the Steelers now. We get a little Goodness. Strong words, RC from Boyd. What do you make of it? I hate it and I love it. I hate it because Tyler Boyd is a whippy old legend. And if you know anything about take on the Packers this Sunday and take on that Packers defense. All right, let's go to Mina. We get to the Seahawks. Mina, let's talk, though, about the Seahawks defense. How concerned should fans be with it? Deeply concerned. Uh, and it's really hard to pin down one problem, but I think it involves both the personnel and the scheme. A lot of this does fall on the coaches because they're still coaching this defense like it's 2000. Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs, both playmakers, but they need to be better because they're letting the offense down. Yeah, Seattle has allowed the most yards and first downs in the NFL this season. That's a crazy stat. <laughs> <Great. laughs> makes okay. you make that face. Let's go to Ray to challenging his players. But Marcus, why haven't the Bucks been able to get the pressure up front this season? Success breeds expectations, and that's what B.A. has. And when we saw this team down the road, all of those guys need to have that same type of energy they had going down the stretch last year. I expect them to get back on track because when B.A. called people out, they seem to play better. You better listen. Yeah, he knows that works. And, and this was a Bucks. Team that really did peak at the right time. Yeah. Of course, the second half of the season on their way to a Super Bowl. Let's get to this new one NFL Let's face on Swagoo because we've asked Travis Kelsey multiple times for your invite as a former tight end. Hey, picks and Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence on either side. But as we begin our show, a lot on that coming later, but the latest coming right now from Bill Belichick. He's preparing to welcome Tom Brady into town. You got Keyshawn Johnson here. You've yay. got Marcus Spears and Adam Schefter there and Dan Orlovsky right here. Did you just say yay? Can you hear yay. He's, he's so got a V for victory. Victory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, but Jeff Darlington joins us from Tampa, where Tom Brady spoke earlier today about his return to Foxborough. Jeff, and last week you put Teddy Bridgewater on the Dan wagon. Who joins him there today? Shockingly, Keyshawn spoke glowingly of Teddy. This the only quarterback in the NFL with eight touchdown passes and no interceptions. Kirk Cousins from the Minnesota Vikings is top five in QBR. He's top five in completion percentage, and he's top five this season. We'd be talking about them a lot more. He is playing in. Incredible football. He is on the Dan wagon. Woo -woo! Hey, our show pony agrees. Can you hear him? He makes sound effects. All right, we'll see you on the Dan wagon next week. I'm keeping this pony. We got a whole lot more that we got to get to. Let's Her get back to the game. With Chris Mortensen, Sam Macho, Jeff Saturday. Uh, I'm Wendy next. And whether it's relax, spelled out, <laughs> or just deep breaths, maybe a little meditation, whatever works for you, any way you look at it, it looks like all is well, or at least a whole lot better with regards to Aaron Rodgers. We take a look at his day at the office, so fans, but I mean, Sam, I, you'd almost like take it what we thought and switch, tur turn it upside down yeah, that's after what, the first three weeks. Yeah, that's what it seems like. But I think what we're seeing is that this division, the AFC West, is one of the strongest, mm. if not the strongest division in football. The worst team, the team with the worst record at this time is the Kansas City Chiefs. We know Rams. Excuse me. I'm getting choked up. He went to the Rams, <laughs> to post them to the number one defense. But people forget. Was well, the quarterback at Dayton. Yes. Oh. Two in the same division. Now, I heard Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Sean McVay, Matthew Stepford in the same city. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Can, wait a minute. Sam. There's a guy named Andy Reid. In Combination in the NFL. More him, he said, no, no. Chill out, Sam. <laughs> yeah. I got receipts. No, what he you, said, he's like, pump the brakes. Yeah, he said, I got receipts. He said, this might be the best young quarterback. The mission of projection. But I will also <laughs> say this. And you heard Sam say, Chiefs, we know they'll be okay. And I, I completely agree with you. But it doesn't mean they don't have to clean a few things up, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, because if they don't, they won't be okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Be careful when we say they're going to be okay. Like, it just it's yeah. automatic. Right now, they are lackadaisical with the football. I have home. Men, protect the football at all costs. We'll get back on the winning side of football. You don't you don't take care of it. You're not winning games in the NFL. It doesn't. Andy Reid, he was hospitalized overnight. More left after the game with some issues. Uh, can we get an update on his health? Yeah, Andy was actually taken to the hospital. Did not even go to his post-game press. He was stable in the hospital before they released him this afternoon. Well, look, it is good news because to know Andy Reid is to love Andy Reid. So That's certainly right. uh, we hope that yeah. good health continues. The AFC West, by the way, the only NFL division, get this, where each team has at least a 50% chance to make the playoffs, according to ESPN's FPI. So we got, we got a long way to go in this division, but we've seen 
some pretty good <laughs> coaches. <laughs> okay. 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 And quarterback. In other words, there's enough fault there's to go around. There's enough to go. When you give up nine sacks, everybody screwed up. Yeah, and this was just an awful right. football. Uh, why everything would be on the table. And Sam, I know you were all for waiting for Fields, giving him a little more time before he started. So here we go. Here we're, here, here's where we are. What do you take away from the, the start and the loss? Yeah, well, first things first, I agree with you. The 33 and a third and a third and a third, like that's such a great point because some of those sacks were on Justin Fields. It's plain and simple. You know that he can help you win the games that you need to win while Justin Fields gets ready so that whole third, that 33 and a third, doesn't go on your rookie quarterback. Well, he's going to have to shake this one off. That's all there is to it. You don't have a lot of choice if you want to go forward. So whatever they decide, you got to put this one in the rearview mirror and move forward and still to come on in. You can talk about being in the MVP running. Well, yeah, and, and Matthew Stafford, so I played against him every year for two years. All that talent notwithstanding, it was clear he needed a change in scenery. Yes. That was just the bottom line, and uh, so far, so good. Uh, let's take a look at the Ravens and the get to be the hero or the goat when you're a kicker, but that's not what they're talking about in that case. Uh, Mort, listen, you hear what John Harbaugh had to say about the play clock. Will we hear anything additional, you think, from the league? Well, the, the league will communicate, certainly. With, it looked like it may have been an extra second or two and a half, which could, should, could have prompted a delay of game call, but it doesn't take away the fact that Justin Tucker still kicked a 66-yard field goal. It doesn't, but it, but a potentially a non-call that, that had some game <laughs> It does game if you play for the Lions. Yeah, it, <laughs> it hurts if you win the Lions, and all of a sudden they're saying, oh, no, I agree. To, I, we'll agree to disagree with Harbaugh on this. It was not just the normal mechanics <laughs> of the play. I well, the bad news, the worst news, I guess you could say, it's not the first time the Lions.